Hi, I'm Wild Bill, Oceanographic Correspondent for Redbeard Pirate Radio. Today, I want to present an opinion piece. Wild Bill on Megalodon. That's right. Nice. Great white shark, or mango shark, on growth hormones. It lived. It left teeth everywhere. Kids brush and floss. It wasn't going to be bullied by other animals, so where'd they go? Are there still some of these colossal beasts, quote, hiding in the Marianas Trench, end quote, or other deeps today? A fun question. Science suggests that climate change supported other species, most of which this incredible stomach on fins could not effectively pursue. Science, too, ever the buzzkill, thinks it was a lot smaller than the History Channel claims. Like, that's a surprise to anyone. Instead of a 20-meter-long megalodon, 66 feet to us old-timers, the new estimate for an adult female is around 8 meters long, or 26.4 feet, only a meter longer than the great biggest great white shark alive today. It's still a big shark, long as a school bus almost, but we have sea animals bigger than that, and they have effective predators too. Meet the transient killer whale, a specialist in attacking large prey. Killer whales hunt in pods, about the same size and number as the lion pride, in teams. Those who hunt sperm whales, yep, Moby Dick never stood a chance, those who hunt the big whales have developed complex tactics to do so. What does that have to do with megalodon, you might ask? Interesting fun fact one, killer whales love the taste of shark liver. Interesting fun fact two, every shark has a shark liver inside. Interesting fun fact three, transient killer whales have developed complex tactics to kill large prey, prey bigger than megalodon. Why would killer whales risk themselves to kill off megalodon? Competition with the same food sources? Walrus, narwhal, beluga, mink, dolphin, seal, and that special prize inside, a shark liver half as big as a killer whale, enough to take some home for the kitties. So Megalodon's fate was sealed the first day big killer whales got together and decided to hunt in packs. Transients, which mostly hunt marine mammals, are larger than residents, which mostly hunt fish. But no matter which type you are, there are hobos too, and a proposed type D, killer whales love them some shark liver. Today's killer whales are enemies that great white sharks literally fear. Great white sharks leave the area at speed and depth when killer whales come near. That's in the literature. Imagine that. Our fearless king of the sea runs and hides when the real bad boys come out to play. The derived tactics are different. To kill a large marine mammal, all you have to do is hold it down until it drowns. That's how transient work, transients work it with whales. To kill a shark, however, you can't just hold it under till it drowns. It breathes water. Hmm. What's a killer whale to do? Ramming speed, Mr. Killer. Killer whales often hunt seals by ramming them. Internal injuries leave targeted seals unable to defend themselves further. This tactic can be used against sharks, whose gills are exceptionally vulnerable to ramming attacks. But wait, there's more. There are killer whales who specialize in large shark liver hunting. Yep, it's true. You can tell which as the shark skin denticles wear down the killer's teeth to nubbins. These killers use a technique only a smart critter would employ, tonic immobility. They turn the shark upside down, and it gets completely disoriented. Now you can play. So little chance of megalodon swimming close to the surface. What about the deeps? Killer whales can't reach the deeps, can they? Nope, you'd be safe there. Except for science, that dick. See, living in the abyss requires significant adaptations, especially for fish. Sharks are fish, part near. Those sharks who dwell in the abyssal zone are not much like our more familiar pelagic types. In fact, deep-dwelling sharks have protein binders and stabilizers just to keep them from being crushed by the pressure. That makes them chemically weird and highly specialized. These sharks, six gills, sleepers, some others, enjoy the frigid depths, are not able to function at full ability when in the shallower, warmer waters near their continents in the St. Lawrence Seaway. They also live in slow motion to conserve energy. To adapt fully to such an environment, especially for a warm-blooded mackerel shark, both great white and makos or mackerel sharks, would require so many changes that megalodon wouldn't be megalodon anymore. 
Even worse, great whites are cursorial hunters, using their eyes as much as any of their other senses to hunt and strike. Sharks in the deep are subject to infection by a parasite copepod, uh, Omatakuita oblongata, that attaches to their eyes and feeds on them, blinding the shark in time. Imagine a surface-dwelling, fast, voracious, eye-oriented, warm-blooded hunter morphing into a deep-dwelling, slow-mo, blind scavenger that just blumps along the bottom till it hits something edible. So no, no megalodons hiding in the deep waiting for a bikini model to have a wardrobe malfunction. And no megalodons near the surface, or we'd have dead ones washing up on shore. And we don't. Oh well, at least we still have Mokeli and Bebe, don't we? Jungle crickets. Uh, the current balance of opinion on uh, Megalodon is that it was more closely related to the Mako shark than the Great White. Wild Bill, 2nd of April. This is no April Fool, 2023.